Greetings, Epic Adventure Seekers. Welcome to your guide to demystifying your world. I'm Ellie Bierman, and you are listening to Let's Get Metaphysical, the show connecting heart and mind. Today, it's just me and you, and I'm going to talk to you about some stuff that happened in my world, very real stuff that happened in my world, and some of it may seem a little bit out there, but the thing is, all these things that happened, other people witnessed them. So I'm not making it up. I'm not imagining it. It's all real. And when you start looking at your world, you just might start discovering some really cool stuff. Two, I'm going to go all the way back to when I was a teenager. I had this great love of everything French. French food, French literature. At that time, my entire library was 20th century French novels and theater plays. Now, here's what's interesting. When I was in high school, we studied the La Chanson de Roland in Middle French. And I had no trouble understanding it. Didn't even have to think twice. That's different from modern French. And the piece of that is, later on as an adult, I saw a past life that I had had. When I meditate, I would see past lives, which really explained things going on in my world. And in this case, it was a past life of me living in a castle in medieval France when guess what language was spoken? Middle French. So that explained why the language was clear, simple, and comfortable for me. Something similar that reflects another past life experience. I love the Chinese culture. I love Chinese food. I love Chinese art, architecture, Chinese Qigong, Chinese medicine. And I used to have a very close friend, Chinese, and she used to kid me that I was more Chinese than she was because I would make dim sum. I would spend three days making Peking duck, which, by the way, I know how to make the best crispy duck you ever tasted in your life. It's a lot easier and faster than making Peking duck. You tell me you're coming to visit me. And if my farmer, my rancher has a duck for you, you'll get to taste what I'm talking about. So let's get back and continue on my journey. When I was a little older and I had a teenage daughter who danced a lot, what happens to dancers? They get hurt a lot. Serious dancers are athletes. They get hurt a lot. And a friend in my world one day said, here, put out your hand, which I did. She then put her hand over mine, above it, not touching. And she didn't say anything. But in a moment, I felt this incredible heat. I didn't know anything about energy. I didn't know what it was. I'd never experienced anything like it before. She didn't know how to explain it either. We both just knew that was energy. And I took that and used it whenever my daughter got hurt. I put my hand over whatever was hurting her. And the energy knows where to go. So no matter where you put it, it moves into the place in the body it needs to go to. And for many years, I helped her to heal many of her injuries. I didn't do it for her. So energy came through me. Her body did the healing because the energy was there allowing it to. So I still didn't know anything about what this was. Now, in a previous story, I told you all about when I had the brain injury. And thank goodness I got into the world of energy because there's no way I could have healed without all the energy techniques that were done for me 
And I was clearly supposed to get into the world of being an energy practitioner, because you know what? I didn't have a short-term memory, so I had to keep my manuals open for reference. But I was usually the first one in the class to understand each new concept and each new technique, and they always, always worked. So I went on to learn more. And like I said earlier, one of my favorite things to do is teach. One thing I did when teaching is, is one of my favorite things to do. And it makes me wonder, is there really such a thing as gravity? I'm not really so sure about that. And here's why. We would have one person sit in a chair. Then I'd have four people come up. They were usually women because who likes to volunteer to do things? It's usually women, women about my size. I'm about 5'3", not huge. And they were all about my size. I have each one go like this. Can you see clearly what I'm doing? Okay. And they would then take their hands. I'd have one person standing, put their fingers just like that, right? Two fingers underneath the armpits and two fingers, same thing. The other two people putting those two fingers underneath the knees. And then together we would say the words, we're working together. He's light as a feather. Interesting that more than half the time, the person we were levitating was a man. So you have four average size women levitating a man. Now, the first time I did this demonstration to people who had never seen it before, the man was about 150 pounds and holy crow, when we went and on three, we went, oh, everybody just went like that, two fingers, right? He went, I thought he was going to fly up to the ceiling. He really went up. So the most interesting experience I had with the levitating was a gentleman who was, oh, he was easily 200 pounds. He was a big guy. He was a tall guy. And as usual, I had four women standing in each position to raise him up with the same chant. We're working together. He's light as a feather. And we couldn't get him off a chair. And we couldn't get him off a chair. And we couldn't get him off the chair. And one of the women of the four was his wife. And she said, it's me. She didn't believe, because you can only create what you actually believe. She didn't believe we could possibly levitate her husband, four women going like this under each armpit, under each knee. So she stepped out. And who was going to replace her? Well, there weren't any other women who wanted to replace her, but there was a nine-year-old boy. Now, he was actually smaller than the women already there. And as soon as he replaced the wife, guess what we did? Up went the 200-pound gentleman. So energy is very real. And what you imagine is very real. So now I'm going to tell you some incredibly fun stuff that happened. Again, I'm talking about energy and gravity and levitation. When I very first learned, you'll hear the term Reiki. I believe energy is energy. And yes, I send it many different ways. I don't really term it Reiki or Amanahuna or anything else. For me, energy is energy. But the first time I learned how to formally set it, Are you ready for this? I close my eyes when I run energy. And a lot of that has to do with when I had that brain injury. I needed to shut my eyes because it's so distracting having all that information coming in through the eyes. 
So to focus on anything, I would close my eyes. I focus my eyes when I run energy. So I'm in the class and there's a person lying on the massage table and I have my hands over her. Yes, it was a her. I think they were all women in the class again. And my eyes are closed and I'm running energy and I'm lowering my hands, okay? And I'm lowering my hands and I'm lowering my hands and I'm lowering my hands because I don't feel her body. And I keep lowering my hands and I still don't feel her body. And you know why? Because our bodies are mostly space. Everything in our environment that looks like solid is mostly space. So my body, my hands being mostly space, we're going through her body mostly space, right through her body. And the teacher, the practitioner, whatever you call her, the master, she said, I thought your hands were going to go right through the table because they went right through the person. Now, after that, I learned how to actually go put my hands on somebody with my eyes open and just go inside. And my hands would disappear inside the person. Am I seeing the insides of the person? No, I'm not. But I'm also not seeing my hands because they're inside the space in the person. Just wanted to throw that out for you to remember that. Okay, so here's another energy experience that you're going to go, mm -hmm. So it was the first time I was doing this in my home. I had no one a massage table yet. So I was working on a bed and my subject was lying on the bed. So I'm just running energy. And all of a sudden I hear thump. Okay. And I'm running energy and I hear thump. And each of those thump was a person falling back onto the bed. She kept rising up three times. She rose up and thumped back down onto the bed. Now, if you think that's weird, again, I was visiting cousin and the male in the household didn't believe any of this stuff, right? So I would run energy on people because I thought it was a beautiful gift because it balances them. And I'm running the energy on him. Just remembering it makes me laugh. And it wasn't just that he came up. The bed he was on jumped. Okay. So I'm there. The bed jumped. <laughs> he looks at me. He says, did you do that? Yeah, right. I'm running my hands over you like this. The bed jumped. And I did that. I picked up the bed and bounced it. I don't think so. Energy is everywhere. I'm energy, your energy, everything is made of energy. There's no such thing as empty space. It's all full of lots of different kinds of energy. Now, let me go on to another kind of experience with running energy. I was on my way to a cruise and I needed to get on the boat before it left, right? On the ship, it was a big cruise ship. So my uncle's driving me there and there's terrible traffic light. We're not going anyplace at all. Traffic stands still. It's Florida, it's hot and the car starts to overheat. And he's concerned that the car is going to Whatever a car does, you've seen cars overheated and the steam comes out and it, you know, it's dangerous, you gotta be careful. Well, I knew I needed to get to that ship. So I just started running, it's called Tibetan Eights, they're figure eights. I can feel the energy even now, they're so powerful. I run Tibetan Eights a lot. I started running Tibetan Eights over the engine of the car and in a matter of minutes not hours in a matter of minutes the car cooled down and we were safe to proceed and i got to the cruise ship easily 
comfortably and safely. Now, here's something else to realize about energy. You've heard of the secret and about how what you hold in your mind, you create in reality and space, if you believe that you will. Well, when I moved back to New York from Idaho, I knew I wanted to live by the woods and near the water. And that's all I knew. And I also had a budget that I wanted to fit in for the place I was going to live. And my son kept saying, that's ridiculous. You're never going to find that kind of home with the woods and the water for what you want to pay. Well, there it was. I found it, moved in. It was right on the Appalachian Trail. Literally, if I stepped off the property, I was on the Appalachian Trail. Across the street, a big, beautiful lake. What you desire in your heart, what you see and feel, because it's the emotions going out that tell the universe what you desire. You don't just think it. You got to feel that it's real. It will happen. The car that I own, I had seen this car a year before I was ready to buy it. The exact model, all that little extras on it, the sports car with the, what do you call a moonroof that, that opens? Anyway, the colors, everything I wanted. But it was a year before I was ready to buy it. So come the next year, I'm ready to buy it. Guess what? The first time I went looking, they didn't have the colors that I wanted. So I said, okay, I'm not supposed to get it yet. But when I went back, because it was time for me to buy it, because I was moving across the country and needed a new car, guess what they had? They had my car, my model, colors inside and out, moonroof, exactly what I wanted it exactly the price I was willing to pay, no haggling. This is what I'm paying. Either sell it to me at this price or I don't buy it. All of that happened exactly as I knew in my heart that I desire. Okay, similarly, whenever I go to the store, this has been happening for years, I would have a shopping list. I usually write it down because once I write down something, I don't need to look at the list again. So I write it down and the act of writing it down is putting it into my body, mind, spirit, and also out to the universe. I'd go into the store. I'm talking about the grocery store. Guess what? 90%, nine out of 10 items on my grocery list on sale. It happened every single time. Also, where I lived in Idaho, no matter what street I went down, there was an amazing library. I've never seen so many incredible libraries in one place. So when I knew I was going by a library, as I approached it, I'd ask my spirit, is there something in there for me today? And if I got a yes, I'd pull into the parking lot, I'd go inside, and I wasn't talking out loud, but in my head, I would ask, please show me where to go. And I'd be led to either a DVD, it was back in the time of DVDs, before all the streaming stuff, or an audio book, or a book. I'd be led directly to the exact item no guessing, no searching. It was something that the universe wanted me to have to know in that moment. And when I pick it up, I'd realize, oh yeah, this is exactly what I want right now. I take it, I check it out. And it was exactly the information or the entertainment that I was ready for in that moment. Now, other times I'd go by a library and I'd get, no, nothing there for you today. 
And I just keep going. You can empower yourself to live like that. And here's where it's critically important to be able to do this kind of thing. When I had that brain tumor, the neurosurgeon said the location of it is very, very touchy. He said the surgery normally runs 10 hours, but in my case, it would be so delicate that he would have to start the surgery one day and then go back and finish the surgery the next day. Do you think that scared me? Well, definitely. It definitely scared me. So what I did was I asked everyone I knew, the people who run energy, the people who don't run energy, who just knew me and loved me and cared about me, to please envision when the surgeon removed the tumor. It slid right out like an egg sliding off a non-stick pan. So are you sitting down? That surgery was done, complete. I was in recovery in four hours, not 10 hours, not two days, four hours. Energy is real. What you put out, what other people put out, it all works together. So what have you noticed? Thinking back in your life, what have you been aware of in your life that came from a desire or a wish that you had? Maybe it's a bicycle you really wanted or your first car that you really wanted. Maybe you wanted to live in a certain place in a certain house or Make friends with a certain person. I don't know what it is for you. But if you stop and you think about it and you look back over your life, I'll bet at least one thing will come to your mind. That's what I call invisible spirituality. It's how the universe works. Energy is always working and always to support you. And support you doesn't always mean, oh, it's going to be beautiful and happy day because lots of times the support you need is to grow through a very powerful lesson. And that usually happens by going into some kind of crisis or painful situation because that's how the universe gets our attention. Think about every time you had a major life change. It came because you went through a crisis. So nothing happens accidentally. Everything happens for us and not to us. I thank you so much for joining me here today. I look forward to hearing from you. Go down in the show notes. You will see the link for joining our Facebook group, for going to our podcast site, and also on the podcast site to be able to get your free gift, Step in a New Direction, because isn't that the reason you're here? You want something to change in your life instead of the same old, same old? The only way you're going to take a new path in your life is when you choose to step in a new direction. I will see you here next week. And next week, I have something really special in the making. I can hardly wait. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. So you come back then. <laughs>